President Biden looking to carry some beltway momentum into battleground states. Next hour, he'll be in Pennsylvania after delivering the type of feisty State of the Union address that Democrats were hoping for last night, aggressively defending his record and his second term plans. Throughout the speech, he knocked former President Trump, though not by name. It was clear who he was speaking about, though. And he contrasted his vision on key issues like the economy and immigration against Republicans' more pessimistic view. The official GOP rebuttal detailed a so-called American nightmare. CNN's MJ Lee is on the trail ahead of Biden's arrival there in Pennsylvania. MJ, another focus last night was, of course, the Israel-Hamas war. And I know you have some new reporting about a recent conversation between Biden and Netanyahu. What can you tell us? Yeah, Brianna, if I could just quickly take you back to a phone call between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu on January 19th. As you can imagine, the two leaders had a lot of heavy issues to discuss uh, related to the war. And what sources tell CNN is that at one point in this phone call, Prime Minister Netanyahu bristled at President Biden uh, over some media uh, reporting uh, that had uh, quoted some U.S. officials anonymously, saying that the U.S. government was reportedly planning for a post-Netanyahu government. And what we are told by our sources is that President Biden, for his part, basically uh, swatted away that idea, saying that it was kind of farcical uh, and essentially saying, look, why are we even talking about this? You are the current leader of Israel and the U.S. government. My administration is going to work with whoever the leader of the Israeli government is. Uh, both men apparently agreed and made clear in this brief exchange that these kinds of anonymous sourcing and quotes from U.S. officials were irritating. Uh, this was an exchange again uh, told to us that it was a brief exchange in this phone call uh, just says a lot about this tenuous relationship that we have seen uh, between the president and the prime minister that has become increasingly strained throughout the course of the war. Uh, and what we know is that, of course, the war has had serious political implications for both of the leaders. And increasingly, we're also seeing that when it comes to the end of the war, uh, their political interests are not entirely aligned. Uh, and when we go back to last night and the State of the Union speech, uh, there was just this incredible moment that was caught uh, after the president had given his remarks, where on a hot mic, the president uh, basically suggested uh, that his relationship with the prime minister was at a crossroads. Take a listen to this moment. I told him, baby, I'm a piece of shit. I said, baby, you know, I can't come to Jesus. And this uh, came, keep in mind, just moments after the president, in his State of the Union remarks, uh, very strongly called out the Israeli government for not doing enough to alleviate the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Take a listen to that moment from last night. To the leadership of Israel, I say this. Humanitarian assistance cannot be a secondary consideration or a bargaining chip. Protecting and saving innocent lives has to be a priority. As we look to the future, the only real solution to the situation is a two-state solution over time. And Israel, of course, was one of the many sort of tough issues that we heard President Biden having to navigate in his remarks last night. And today we are here in the suburbs of Philadelphia, where he is going to be making his first post-State of the Union campaign stop. And we're going to see him taking some of the vision that he laid out for the country in yesterday's uh, speech to a number of battleground states in the coming weeks. Brianna. All right. MJ Lee uh, there in Pennsylvania ahead of the president's arrival. Thank you. Apparently, he said in a hot mic moment uh, to Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado, I told Bibi, don't repeat this. I said, you and I are going to have a come to Jesus meeting. Now, if he can get Bibi Netanyahu to come to Jesus, <laughs> I was going to say that yeah. will be something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but right. He's been facing so much pressure from the left, not only the left. I mean, as, as the situation in Gaza worsens, um, you, you've really seen Biden sort of move um, from where he was on the 7th, like a lot of people have moved where they yeah. were on the 7th. And, you know, perhaps that's what's next. I don't know if Jesus is going to be involved. Yeah, I don't think so. I and, you know, J Jamal Bowman, who has been one of his, maybe one of two of his uh, biggest uh, critics and yeah. is very much um, passionate uh, on, on an issue uh, on one side of this, 
uh, said that he would have liked to have heard an immediate ceasefire mm -hmm. uh, call from the president, and but that he was happy that he was critical of Israel. Well, they knew they, they of course they that wasn't going to happen. Gonna get that. But I guess the question is whether or not this was going to tamp down on some is of the it cases. enough rhetoric it enough? only goes so right. far exactly. though, right. right and i mean you can talk about the efforts to uh, have humanitarian aid go in but at yeah. this point people are looking for some sort of hostage agreement and ceasefire okay you know, the, the other thing that surprised me was starting out with ukraine yeah. i really never heard a state of the union speech mm -hmm. that started out with foreign policy yeah no it's true it's it very was, it was remarkable